Cholecystitis is the topic, and uh, this is um, a condition that basically is very common, and it's, it involves inflammation of the gallbladder. Um, and to understand this fully, um, I think it's good to draw a little diagram. So I'll draw a little gall, gallbladder here, which is GB, and then coming out of this, um, a system of uh, ducts which comprise what is known as the biliary tree. So um, this one here is the cystic duct and that's where the gallbladder um, emits um, bile. Bile will come down this uh, cystic duct. And then these two up here, this is the right hepatic duct and as you can deduce the other one is the left hepatic duct. And then those two ducts uh, combine to form this one, which is the common hepatic duct. And then these two join to form what is no known as the common bile duct. And they um, enter the duodenum uh, at a specific point, and this is the duodenum. And there's one other duct that kind of joins in with this uh, common hepatic, sorry, common bile duct, and that's known as the pancreatic duct. So, all these ducts basically are involved in the biliary tree, and of course the liver. Uh, I'll just draw a silhouette of the liver. The liver sort of sits up here. Hopefully, that's not too confusing. Now, cholecystitis is basically when you have a stone uh, in the cystic duct. So that stone will. Let's, it'll sit there and what it will do is block the outflow of the bile. Now the bile, uh, use green because bile is green, uh, what happens is when the bile is not able to uh, flow outward you get bi um, bile stasis which basically means that it just stays in one place and that can trigger the release of these enzymes uh, that cause inflammation so that's essentially how cholecystitis happens and 95 percent of the time it's because of a stone five percent of the time it can be acalculus and what that means is what that means is there's no stone and the theory behind that is that inflammation happens because of other reasons such as ischemia or infection but for the most part it's a stone so what are the symptoms? Um, again, not incredibly uh, specific, but they can help in some regard because you have right upper quadrant pain and right upper quadrant pain, can at least it's localized, so you can kind of figure out what organs are in that part of the body. One, that, uh, one specific sign that's very helpful is it's called, it's called Murphy's sign. And what Murphy sign is, is basically inspiratory arrest on palpation of the right upper quadrant. And what that means is when you palpate the right upper quadrant, the patient will um, halt, halt their inspiration. Inspiratory arrest. Arrest sounds really bad, but it just means that they stop. It's hard for them to take in a breath when you're palpating their right upper quadrant. That's known as Murphy sign. Um, other non-specific symptoms such as nausea and vomiting, but those can happen in anything really. So somebody comes in and you suspect that they might have some pathology going on in their gallbladder. The diagnosis is almost always an ultrasound because it's cheap and it's fast and it's all, oftentimes abbreviated like this, right upper quadrant ultrasound. So remember that. They'll, they'll always try to trick you by putting in CT and MRI and blood tests and all that. CT and MRI are way too expensive for an initial test, and blood tests are not very specific in this um, uh, condition. So the treatment involves basically the big one, which is surgery, cholecystectomy, and then there's more immediate uh, supportive care, such as IV fluids, um, pain medicines, and then uh, antibiotics. And the antibiotics are are given if you wonder why is because sometimes there can be a bacterial infection that develops 
in the uh, same time that this inflammation is going on. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like as a patient presentation. A 44-year-old obese woman presents to the emergency department complaining of three hours of severe abdominal pain. She has also had multiple episodes of vomiting. She describes the pain as worse than labor, it radiates to the intrascapular region, temperatures 102. She has severe tenderness in her right upper quadrant. She reports that she has had multiple epi similar episodes in the past, which lasted approximately 30 minutes and resolved spontaneously. Which of the following is the most likely being obstructed by a gallstone? Well, all they're asking you is if you have a diagram of the biliary tree, which one of those ducts is being obstructed? And uh, earlier in the um, video, I had told you that it's the cystic duct. So that's a good uh, thing to remember. And then the last one, 43-year-old white woman presents to the emergency department with one day of increasingly severe pain localized to the right upper quadrant radiating to right lower scapula. She also has been experiencing nausea and vomiting. The woman has had similar but milder episodes of pain in the past which had resolved spontaneously in a few days. Physical exam demonstrates involuntary guarding of abdominal muscles on the right. The gallbladder is palpable. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step? So obviously some right upper quadrant related uh, condition most likely involving gallbladder, if I had to deduce, and definitely you need to do an ultrasound as the next step. As I had mentioned, CT and MRI are way too expensive, you know. And um, EGD, which is what this is, this is a test that you use to uh, look down somebody's uh, esophagus and uh, stomach and those kinds of things, like if somebody had a gastric ulcer, it's not really useful for a gallbladder. And this, which is sometimes also known as an ERCP procedure, is something that you would do uh, perhaps later on to, to, to see if there's a stone in the extrahepatic uh, bile duct system, but usually not done as an initial step. So the correct answer is E.